Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the conditional distribution for a contingency table. Now it's called conditional because we're going to put a condition on it. So here we're going to be making our condition uh, the sex of the cell. And so we will be using instead of the total for the table, we'll be using the total for the row. So it's still a relative frequency, but it will be calculated conditionally for the row. And so we'll be using 72 as our total for males and 72 for females. So there I wrote R and then a straight line M. That is read as right-handed given that they're males. Remember that was our condition. So it's still a relative frequency. So I use that observed count, but again, I'm using the total for the row. And then I row L and then a straight line M, and that's read as left-handed given that they're male. Again, that's our condition. And so we have eight as our observed count, and then 72 is our denominator because that's our total for the row. So it stands to reason that those two values should sum to one because they're making up that row, and they do. And then we have right-handed given that they're female, and the observed count for that cell was 66. And again, that's conditionally, uh, or the condition there is that they're female, and so our total is 72, or that's our denominator. And then we have left-handed given that they're female, and that was an observed count of six. And then our denominator would be 72. So these condi conditional distributions help us to know if the explanatory and response variables are related. Uh, the more different that they are, the more likely that the explanatory and response variables are related. Here, because they're so similar, probably not. In future videos, we'll go into that a little bit more. See you there.